Good day and welcome to our lecture for today about heat transfer and our topic is about convection on flat plates. So in this session we will be learning the different empirical formulas associated with flat plate geometry and the different flow types. Source for this lecture is Fundamentals of Heat and Mass Transfer by Bergman. So before we go into the formulas and numbers, let's first establish our nomenclature for our variables and other conditions. So here we have our U as our flow speed since our flow will be categorized as forced convection and our temperature for the fluid should also be known. Our surface temperature is denoted by Ts and the length of the plate is denoted by L. We also have our critical length uh, which is denoted by X sub C and here we are going to categorize our flow also by laminar and turbulent and from our fluid mechanics class we know that the laminar is when flow is smooth and the layers flow smoothly on top of each other and turbulent flow is when there is eddies forming, the boundary layer is unstable. So let's begin first. Now the empirical formulas require a lot of assumptions. So one of the assumptions is to have uniform surface temperature. Now what this means is that the surface temperature here, this Ts, is assumed to be constant across the whole length of the plate. Now in order to find our convection coefficient, we need our Nusselt number. And our Nusselt number can be computed either locally, meaning to say at any point along the plate, and in average terms or as a whole. So the local formula, the local laminar Nusselt number formula is denoted by this expression right here. We all know from our previous lessons that our empirical formulas are of the form C, Reynolds number raised to the power of a certain m multiplied by the Prandtl number raised to a certain n. So these three numbers, your c, your m, and your n, are the ones that will be varying and changing across different flow types and geometries. So here for our local laminar Nusselt number, we have 0 0.332 as our c, one half as our m, and one third as our n. And this is only applicable for fluids with a Prandtl number of 0 0.6 higher. If we were to use this on a fluid with a lower Prandtl number, the values would be greatly obscured from what we would actually get in experiments versus the computation that would, that would result from this equation. So after which I have my local Nusselt number. I can now compute depending on the Reynolds number at any point along the plate, I can get my Nusselt number and my convection coefficient across any point along the plate. Now, in order to get my average Nusselt number, I need to know what my local Nusselt number is and simply integrate it along the x direction. So, plugging in this expression into this integral form, I will get an equation with the same exponents m and n, but my coefficient will now be multiplied by 2. So instead of 0 0.332, I get 0 0.664 as my first coefficient for my Nusselt number, my average Nusselt number. So this is also applicable to plates who experience the critical flow at the end points, or in other terms, it can be called as if 95% of the plate experiences laminar flow. So if majority is laminar, then there is also no need to compute for the turbulent Nusselt number. So speaking of turbulent Nusselt numbers, if our flow is categorized to be fully turbulent, meaning to say from the start to finish, the flow is turbulent, as we can see here in the diagram, our formula changes. So instead of your 0 0.332 as seen here, it will now be 0 0.0296. And instead of 1 half, our exponent will be 4 fifths. So 
this is for the local Nasot number. And again, for the average turbulent Nasot number, we get this formula. So we will be using 0 0.037 as our C. And we will still be using our Reynolds number at the maximum point of the flat plate along this point. So here are the two different equations, four rather, the two different flows of the laminar flow and the fully turbulent flow. Now, as we already know from the, f from the first diagram, the flow starts out as laminar and then transitions to turbulent. So how do we go over this when we only have formulas for laminar and fully turbulent? So there is a correction factor of A here. This is the formula and this simply compensates for the assumption that the initial portion was turbulent. Now that we consider this portion to be laminar, this equation needs to be, this constant right here needs to be plugged in to our equation. So this Reynolds number denoted by a subscript x comma c means that this is the critical critical Reynolds number. So it depends also on the problem or depending on the geometry what what will be your category for a critical Reynolds number. So sometimes the critical Reynolds number uh, is assumed to be 10,000 sometimes it may be higher it may be lower. So plug in the correct critical Reynolds number on this term and also on this term. Get the value and plug in this value to your initial equation. Denoted by the Reynolds number at subscript L, this simply means that the, get the Reynolds number at the tip of your flat plate. Now, all of these equations assume that the surface temperature is constant. So if the assumption is different, it becomes uniform heat flux, there will now be also changes in the constants. So the constants are as follows right here for laminar flow and the constant is here for turbulent flow. This time we will not be able to get a uniform or an average Nusselt number due to the fact that the assumption of a uniform heat flux requires our convection coefficient to be varying and our temperature to be also varying. So this gives us the local Nusselt number at any point along a plate. So a bonus subtopic since we are already talking about an empirical method of solving, the drag coefficient can also be solved using an empirical method. Here we have the formulas for the local and average drag coefficient for laminar and here is for the turbulent we have also our local and average simply plug in the necessary Reynolds number and for our mixed or our laminar and turbulent flow we also have this formula right here with the correction factor A again present So that ends this, this short discussion on the different equations used by our engineers to solve for the local convective heat transfer without resulting to the difficult mathematics accompanied by a more analytical approach.